Hey Transformers, uh, thank you so much for joining us today, wherever you're watching us from. Uh, you know, if this blesses you, share it with your friends. And we are excited that you could take time and tune in. My name is Oscar Misi. I'm a pastor in this church. And like we've always said, we, we pray for you. We believe God for you, whatever you are. No situation is difficult for our God. God can change your situation. And we've been looking at leadership lessons from Jesus Christ, the greatest leader ever. And, and, and we talked from the first day and said, you know, one quality that Jesus modeled to us, as far as leadership is concerned, that is key and important to any leader, is the quality of servanthood. You've got to be a servant leader. And from day one, we said that this nation, this country, this continent, the nations of the world are hungry for servant leaders. I cry for my African continent, including my country, Kenya. Many of the leaders that we have are not servant leaders, are bosses who are just there for their own selfish interests. We pray that God will change this for us, that as people will be on the lookout for servant leaders who are not so much concerned about titles and positions, but they are concerned about transforming uh, the nation and transforming those that are around them. God help Kenya. God help our country. And we looked at the first and we said, servant, servanthood is really that sacrificial act from a leader that is interested in others excelling. And that's what servanthood is all about. You want to see other people excel. You want to see the people around you become better than you found them. And when we looked at scripture, we realized, uh, especially from the Gospel of John in chapter, in Gospel of John in chapter 13, we picked three things that Jesus Christ modeled to us. And the first thing that we looked at, we said, Christ modeled to us that your position should not make you too big to serve. Your position should not make you too big to serve. Whichever place you find yourself in, be a servant, serve people. In fact, that's the essence of leadership, is service. Number two, we learned that God or Christ modeled to us that we serve God when we serve others. When you serve people that you can see, then you're really serving God. You can't say, I serve God, and you can't serve people that you can see. When you serve others, you're serving God. Number three, Christ modeled to us that as far as servanthood is concerned, the way up in God's economy is the way down. And then on day two, we looked at the attitude of the servant because we said it's really the posture of the heart. And there's a way servant leaders think, effective servant leaders think, and we give you three ways in which they think. And we said first one is that they think people first and not positions. People first and not positions. I challenge you, especially some of the countries in this continent that are getting into elections. Kenya, we will soon look for people who are interested in people, not guys who are interested in positions. Number two, we saw that servanthood uh, people who, who are servant leaders think service first and not comfort. They want to serve people. They're not just out for their comfort. Number three, we said they think purpose first and not profit. Purpose first and not profit. And then on the third day, we looked at the, mo at the motive of a servant leader. And we said, you know what? Servant, servanthood does, is not really so much, it's not just about the actions that you bring out there, but it's really about what motivates you to do that. And we said it's important to have a right motivation. That's what we looked at at day three. And then we said there are two kinds of leaders. We picked that from uh, one of the greatest leadership coaches, uh, Patrick Lenzoni, when he says there are two kinds of leaders. One is responsibility-centered leaders and reward-centered leaders. And we said, don't you be a reward-centered leader who's only out there for what is beneficial to you. Be a responsibility-centered leader who looks out for the betterment of others and the organization that you're in. When you do that, then you're being driven by the right motives. Then day four, we looked at the right motive for serving, and we picked three things. We said authenticity. You've got to be genuine. Don't lead and serve with cards under the table. Don't project something different from what you are. Number two, we talked about selflessness. We said all great leaders who are servants at heart are selfless. They are thinking about the people that are around them. They realize that as a leader, you'll always give more than you get. You'll always give more of your time 
more of your resources. There's, there's a lot of sacrifice for you to pay uh, if you're going to be a servant leader. And then number three, we looked at humility and we said great servant leaders are humble. They are humble. They understand, you know what, when success comes, it is all of us who succeeded. They're not those who uh, blame others when there's failure and gloat over all the success and personalize that to themselves and say, it's me who did it. No, they know how to share the credit. They know how to take the blame and pass the praise. That's what we looked at. And we said, be like a bamboo tree. There's a Chinese saying that says, uh, a bamboo tree, the higher it grows, the lower it bows. The higher you grow, the lower you get to bow. Today, I want us to look at the wrong motives for service. Yesterday, we looked at the right motives. Today, we look at the wrong motives for service. We look at the wrong way that would sometimes drive us to serve. You see, a wrong motive for serving will drive you to do everything to gain popularity. Everything for your own betterment. Everything. You'll even throw away important values in life. Why? Because you want to be popular. You'll compromise on your principles because you want to be popular. That's what the wrong motives will drive you to do. You become dishonest in your dealings in order to achieve your goals. I'll say that again. Because you're driven by wrong motives, you become dishonest in your dealings in order to achieve your goals. You throw all matters integrity out of the window because there's something you're interested in. I want to be popular. You become like King Saul in the Bible in 1 Samuel 13. Uh, you read that chapter, the story of King Saul, because he was so, he really wanted to be popular. One day, uh, he's waiting for Samuel, the priest, uh, to come and offer a sacrifice. Samuel delays and King Saul, because he was so concerned about the people around him, he goes ahead to do that which he's not supposed to do. Why? Because he wanted to be popular with the people. Look at what the Bible says in verse 11 and 12 of 1 Samuel chapter 13. It says this, uh, when Samuel gets to the scene and finds him having broken all the principles uh, and all the guidelines that God had given, uh, Samuel asks him, what is this that you have done? And listen to Saul's reply. I saw my men, listen, I saw my men scattering from me. Can you imagine they are now my men, not even God's men. I saw my men scattering from me and you didn't arrive when you said you would. And the Philistines are at Michmash ready for battle. So I said, the Philistines are ready to march against us at Gilgal, and I haven't even asked for the Lord's help. So I felt compelled to offer the burnt offering myself before you came. Why? Because I saw my men. I wanted to please the people. I want them to think I'm that which I am not. Wrong motives for serving. You're there to be a men's pleaser. You are there for popularity. That's a wrong motive for service. I want to give you three wrong motives and then I will be out of your way. The three wrong motives, of the way I've lined them up, they're very easy for you to remember. They all start with the letter P. Letter P. The first one is popularity, like we said earlier. You are driven by a hunger and a desire to be recognized and to make a name. You want to make your name. I want to be on the billboards. I want everybody to sing my praise. That was King Saul. I want everybody to, to know me. I want to be recognized in the marketplaces. I want to be saluted everywhere I walk. What drives you, and it's a wrong motive, is popularity. It's not so much if you're leading in a company about the organization. If you're leading in, the ch in a church, it is not so much about that church. If, if you're leading uh, in which, whatever corporate space you're in, it's not so much about that space. All you want is not to drive the vision and the purpose of the organization. It's all about how popular you can become, how many people know me. So you do that to publicize yourself. And this is the trap that has caught so many political leaders, has caught so many church leaders. Instead of saying, I want the king of kings to be known. I want to make sure that there's my big name out there. It's my name that is known. I want my picture on the billboard. I want my picture everywhere. I mean, why? Just because I want to be known. I want to be popular. You forget that you're here as a church leader to lift up Christ. In fact, the Bible says we need to raise him up, lift him up so that men may see him. You need to draw and direct people to Christ. You start directing people to yourself. And, and, and even political leaders, you'll do stuff so that people will, will, will know you'll become popular. 
And you're not doing those things because you care about the people. You genuinely care about them. You do that and you'll publish it everywhere so that people see and they sing your praise. All you're looking for is visibility. I want to be seen. Popularity is the number one wrong motive for service. Number two wrong motive for service is pretense. So there's popularity and there's pretense. You're always creating an impression that in reality does not exist. Always creating an impression that in reality does not exist. These leaders are not authentic. What you see is not what you get. Everything they do is out of pretending. They want to pretend, they're pretending to be what? They are not. What they say in the boardroom is very different from what they say publicly uh, or say to their staff. Why? Because they pretend to care. They pretend to be serving and they are not. Living, when you, when, you, when, when you work under such leaders, especially in a corporate space or in a church organization, and you realize that the people around such people, when they realize that these people are, you know, have got all the wrong reasons for wanting to lead, their energy dissipates. They lack motivation. They don't trust their leaders. And in the long run, the organization gets affected. Why? Because of your wrong motives, you have been able to bring about or to project a toxic environment and people no longer trust you people no longer love their work because they know this one is not in here because he cares about us but all he's doing is pretending number three pride so uh, popularity pretense and pride and this pride is the opposite of humility leaders motivated by pride do things to satisfy their own ego they do stuff to satisfy their own ego. Unfortunately, and many may not know, but such leaders are insecure. They, are, they always go out to try and prove a point to those that they lead. They never talk about we as a team. They always talk about I, 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 I did this. I said that. I took the organization. They'll never talk about it's we as a team who did it. They'll always talk about I, as a person. When the success for the organization, it is attributed to the smartness and the vision of the leader. When there's failure and mistakes, it is attributed to the lack of commitment and disloyalty of the team. Why? Because these are proud leaders. They're driven by the wrong motives, always out to prove a point that I'm better by, than so-and-so. I'm the smartest in the organization. I'm the smartest around here. But you see, when you're led or you're driven by that, then you're not able to motivate your team. I am going to ask you this question as I bring this to a close. What kind of a leader are you? What drives you to serve? What drives you to lead? Is it the right motives or is it the wrong motive? Are you out there just for popularity? Are you just pretending to be what you're not in that organization? Is your pride driving you? Are you just there to satisfy your own ego? To satisfy your own insecurity and project what you're not? Are you one of those who, who is like, if we make it, it's because I am smart. I'm a visionary. But if there's a failure, the team is not committed. The team is disloyal. What kind of a leader are you? I pray that you'll be driven by the right motives. You'll be a leader who transforms. You'll be a leader who impacts people around you. People will love to serve together with you because they know you've got their interests at heart. You're not using them. You're that leader who has learned to use things but to value people. To use things but to value people. Look at Jesus Christ. He took a group of 12 uh, disciples Men who could not have made it to any A team of any leader out there. They couldn't even have made it to a B or C or D team. These are people who are not learned. Some of them were rebels, but Christ takes them, transforms them, empowers them, and makes them into great leaders. Why? Because his motives for his motive for serving those people was the right motive. I pray that you'll be that kind of a leader. I want to pray for you and believe God that as you lead and as you serve, you'll influence many. Father, I pray for my viewers. I pray that you bless them. I pray that what we've learned today will challenge them and provoke them to become better.
than who they are today. That every day they'll be better at leading, better at serving. So bless them in all their endeavors and in Jesus' name. God bless you. See you again when we pick on the same topic of leadership. God bless you. Shalom. Thank you.